co-hosting with me, New York Times best-selling author John Gilstrap. Johnny, good morning, sir. Jefferson County prosecuting attorney Matt Harvey. Good morning. Good to see you. No sweater vest today, Matt. I did that on purpose by design. Wow. I'm gonna throw you all. I don't. I'm just tired of being called Natalie. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> That's not my name. My name's Matt or Matthew. How about Natalie? Hmm? Oh, the Natalie clad Jefferson with his County. fedora. You got the hat today? No, no fedora. Today. No, no hat. I keep forgetting it. I put it. I set it up on top of the hall tree. Yeah. So I just walk out and I don't ever see it. Did you bring your hat today? It's in the car. Very nice. Mike Hornby, do you have a hat today? I do not have a hat. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Matt. And good morning, John. Good morning. We got to get you a hat. No hat. We can't mess this hair up. Oh, well, that's true. <laughs> Some of us don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> We have your picture up now when you were Speaker of the Day, and you're, you're, yeah. st you're staring skyward to the right, looking up for guidance from God, it looks like. <laughs> and he got it. <laughs> and ever since then, I've started uh, speaking a little more on the floor. I had to defend my own bill the other day. It was pretty, uh, it, was, it was, I got grilled by the lawyers, man. We, we saw that. You closed, I call you now, Mike, this is America Hornby, because that's how you closed yes. your, uh, your raw milk speech. You know, I had a lawyer sitting next to me, and he kept uh, whispering in my ear all these uh, law you know, laws and things like that, and he was speaking Latin to me. And eventually I just said, hey, you know, shut up. Let me just do this my way. I only, I, I can only speak to things I love. So I, I closed that way, and that's, that's how I felt. So. It, it's nice to know that you've taken that conversational technique that you and I share with each other down to the, <laughs> down to the Capitol, where you just yeah. say, shut up, Rob, do it the way I said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was uh, it was very daunting doing that. But I was very um, humbled and, and proud to, to be able to do it myself. So there's you, a lot of people that that don't. Do you find that you can uh, maybe impress people? Maybe people give you a little too much credit because of your accent. You can fool them a little bit, Mike. Yeah, I think I can lull them into that. You know. You know, I'm not a very smart guy. You know that, Matt. So I can lull him into that uh, sense of, hey, this is just a simple boy from Africa. You let me come on here every Thursday. So, yeah, I would question your intelligence. <laughs> so Colin has the video. Uh, you, have it, you have it racked up, ready to play, Colin. This is the, the video of Mike's uh, closing floor speech. This was for the raw milk bill, I think, correct? That is true. Yeah, you have it, Colin. If you have it, go ahead and, and cue it up, rack it, roll it. Oh, I got it. I got it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, you know, folks, most of you know, I, I grew up in a socialist dictatorship. And even under that dictatorship, we were allowed to buy raw milk to use. Um, I will say this. I look around the lawyers in the room, and, and I'm friends with a lot of them. But sometimes we have to accept personal responsibility. Sometimes we have to look at each other and say, I want to buy milk from you, I should be able to buy milk from you. But if I choose to buy raw milk from you and drink that, I get a little tummy ache, I shouldn't have to be able to sue a tiny little farm who's got two milk cows. I mean, let's be honest. If I want to buy raw milk from my neighbor, I should be able to buy raw milk from my neighbor. What I do with it is my problem. I can still pasteurize it, I can still make cheese, I can still do all the other things I want to do with it. This is America. <laughs> and crown thy good with other <laughs> the, the cows out of the barn. Yeah. So it, what if people just... take the raw milk, make raw cheese, and then sell it and someone gets a tummy ache? We've been doing it for eight years, and on average only about four people a year even get sick. It's the only product that we put this restriction on, that we put herd share on. You can't go to a chicken farm, buy raw chicken, eat raw chicken, and then complain that you got sick. Only an idiot would eat raw <laughs> chicken. So um, if you choose to buy raw milk, there's an implied um, sense of liability. Um, and, and I won't go into all the goodness milk can do for you, but you know we saw during the pandemic, the the milk shelves are bare, and that's where Crush and I kind of started looking into this. Uh, we happen to live next to a farm, and this herd share Ponzi scheme is ridiculous. So, 
um, that's where this this bill came from. Was like it, I couldn't believe we couldn't it, buy milk. We've been drinking a, milk for thousands of years. Is this a creation of um, under the guise of public health? It's a protection racket for the for the dairy industry. Well, I I don't think so. I I just think you know. Obviously, there is an inherent risk with drinking a, a product that's raw. And, and back in the day, we didn't have the clean solutions, and you know we had to pasteurize it because the we didn't have the the health that we have today. I think, you know, when you when you're milking into a bucket or a wooden bucket a hundred years ago, it's different from the technology that we have today, where it you know you can milk it there's little personal milkers so um the, the essentially you know you when you milk a cow i don't know whether you know this when you milk a cow um and you don't hold that tail you can get a lot of poop all over you so because you're, you're you're at the back end of a of a cow um so um back in the day i think it was a problem i think these days we figured it out how to keep the poop out of the milk well, okay, that's the open. Bad, that's bad, the open bad. right there. That's just a bad visual. I don't. Nobody even will ever drink chocolate milk again. <laughs> oh mercy! I wish I wasn't here right now. I'm but I will say that's that, a mic that, drop that's moment the right there. The yeah, <laughs> that's the fact of the matter. Yeah. So. This whole raw milk thing—I got to say—this one sort of smack the side of the head. It's like that's a thing. That's a law that says you can't you can't drink milk. I, I, yeah. I had no idea. So good it, on you, Mike. It's pretty. It's a, pretty much the only product that we have this law that says you have to have a herd share program. So it was one of those things. I, I'm excited. It's over in the Senate. I've got a number of bills that have actually passed the House. I'm really excited. I think I might have up to 10 bills passed this uh, session. So it started off really slow, but essentially I got three, four across this week. What do you got? So one I'm really excited about is the con computer science graduation requirement, which is a a plan for a six-year plan to introduce computer science to our schools as a requirement for their graduation. Uh, right now, about 78% of our schools are already doing this. Um, in West Virginia right now, there's 871 open jobs that are to do with computer science, and each of those jobs average about $80,000. Uh, so my thought was we need to to be on the forefront of the United States and, and look to computer science as a way to to get our kids to look into computer science um, a, a lot of young ladies and a lot of uh, maybe economically um, distressed people aren't looking to that and I think this is a way that we can be on the forefront um, of creating kids that are at, you know doing computer science and doing things and getting great great jobs so um, it's a six-year plan, um, and it's over in the Senate education now. So I passed the House. I'm excited. All right. Next. Um, the state auditor to conduct audits of all county boards of education. i um, working with uh, the majority leader right now on a on – a, um, uh, an amendment to it to kind of give it a little more teeth. Um, so we're working on that. Healthcare Sharing Ministries is on second reading in the Senate. So that'll be probably the first one that it actually passes. And I'm really excited that my uh, chemistry plasma games uh, bill I, I kind of talked to you about, that is actually running in finance um, on Friday, which is extremely exciting. Tell me some more details about that. So that is it, again. This is to allow schools to implement. Um, it, it's meant for this company for, called Plasma Games, but we're open up to, to all companies. But it's basically to uh, to encourage chemistry and chemical engineering um, in West Virginia. We have a lot of coal plants. We do a lot of manufacturing, Procter and Gamble, things like that. We we have a shortage of chemical engineers. Uh, those jobs again offer you know they're in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. So if we can get our students to start getting interested in chemistry um, and chemical engineering, because um, it's it's not a very exciting topic, but this company has made uh, has come up with a program that I think is dynamic and uh, they, they have huge success in South Carolina. So uh, I backed that. And that will be running in finance. It's a, a joint effort between the Department of Education and the Department of Commerce and the Department of Workforce. 
There's a headline on the Metro News uh, webpage, House Education Committee advances their version of bill that gives special education teachers and aides a raise, Mike. Yes, we passed that yesterday. Um, we kind of created a, a hole by passing the aides um, bill, the first, second, and third grade reading um, in math. So what happened was a lot of our special needs aides went over and took the regular aides job because it was actually paid more. So what we did is we adjusted it. I hope it gets refinanced before Monday or Tuesday. I think it's crossover. Um, it, it's one of those things where we created a hole. And now we're trying to fill that hole and give them uh, what the, what we think they deserve. Is there a similar bill in the Senate that gives us a chance of passing? I think um, we are either um, – we could amend this bill into a Senate bill or do something like that if we don't get it across. But um, I, I know Chairman Ellington sits on finance, and you know, as chair, he has a little bit of influence. So hopefully we, we, we don't have to do the, any of that shenanigans. There's a Senate bill that would allow – kids that are playing club sports to also play varsity high school sports during the same season at their high school. Uh, and I don't know if you've discussed this in the House or not, but what are your thoughts on that? No, I don't, I don't think we've discussed that at all yet. We haven't, we've looked at a couple of Senate bills in education. I know there was a bill in judiciary regarding removing the vaccine requirement for private schools, uh, virtual schools, and things like that. And I don't think they had any um, sports um, in there. So that might be something that might, might come up um, you know, on the floor. As it is right now, if you're playing club, you can't play uh, yeah. in your high school the same season and vice versa. I believe so. Uh, yeah. As well, they're trying to remove that. I, I would not be in favor of that removal, by the way. I think that's yeah. just too much for a kid in one season. John? And I know the, uh, I know the governor really wants the, uh, the transfer um, bill removed, but um, it died a, a death in, in, in house education. There's a bit of legislation that, that strikes me as kind of odd, and it, it's blocking the release of mugshots for, <laughs> for people in, uh, who have been arrested. And Matt, since you're here too, I'm, I'm curious, what itch are we scratching here? So I, I think the intent, and I, I, I don't know who actually authored it, but I think the intent of that bill was, you know, if you get arrested, you still don't you're not convicted of anything and your mugshot's being put up and it's being put in these um, websites or um, magazines and it could ruin somebody's um, weekend or, you know, it could, it could have a serious impact on their, their... The issue I have with the bill is it includes um, news outlets, radio stations, TV stations. So I, I don't... I don't know if I could support the bill the way it is just because it doesn't have a carve-out for the press. Um, and I think the press needs to be have access to those things for, for news uh, gathering. And, and that's, again, I think that's on uh, first reading today. When I read the article for it, John, it mentioned that uh, years later, people are still being haunted by mistakes they made as a kid. And their mugshot is yeah. out from being 18 and doing something stupid. They're 40 going for a job and somebody finds the 18-year-old mugshot and they can't yep. get the job. Or, well, the, and, or the case was dismissed or they were found not guilty. Yeah. Well, the, yeah. So why should there, Mike, why should there be an exemption for the media because the media is what is where the reputation would be ruined if it turns out to well, not to well, be innocent. I, I look to it as you remember when uh, Donald Trump's mugshot was uh, published and, and, and brought to thing. I, I think that that was a pretty iconic mugshot. I think obviously in that case, it, it, it actually helped him and helped his popularity. But I think um, in certain circumstances, the, the freedom of the press should be, uh, should be looked at. I, you know, I think it's more social media is where the issues are. Um, but, you know, I, as an owner of a radio station, it's, uh, it's kind of self-serving, but uh, that's my feeling. Well, let me throw out another scenario. Is we have we, and it, recent... Uh, legislative sessions, this has been expanded to be more inclusive and to allow more people to take advantage of the expungement bill. So you can have criminal charges, e even convictions taken off your record. So you can become mm -hmm. more employable. How That yeah. doesn't apply to the internet. 
So it might come off your criminal record, and you can legally answer, have you ever been convicted of a crime? And you, you, it says in the statute, you can absolutely say, no, I have not. But your employer or the, the prospective employer can go to the Internet, t- pull it up, boom, there's your mugshot from, from 15, 20 years ago. Is there a statutory purpose for a mugshot? I mean, this day and age? I mean, they've always been part of the arrest process, at least as portrayed on television. Oh, and, and this, that, <laughs> that, that, that scenario mug, that I described is, is happening to people as we speak. Oh, I'm sure it is. And which then begs a question or invites a question. Um, why do we do mugshots at all? Are they are they really necessary? I think it's identifying. Uh, that's yeah. It's kind of the I we use them. same way. We use them. Like if we're doing a recidivist yeah. trial, we'll use their mugshots from yeah. their previous incarcerations. Uh, but but you have to. <laughs> if someone says that wasn't me, and then that was arrested, or I'm not, you got the wrong person. I mean, th- there is there's definitely a law enforcement use for them. Now I, it's debatable whether there's a public use for them or not. And I'd, I'd agree with you, man. I think it, it's something I'm going to have to look into um, pretty hard, and, and I'll make that decision probably on the floor. Mike, your thoughts on the 89 to 11 vote to allow teacher carry? We had a good segment with John Doyle. Uh, also, John Hardy touched on it a bit uh, before he uh, finished up his segment with us, too. And we'll do a lot more with Doug Smith in a second here. Yeah. Um, that was Doug Smith's bill, fantastic bill. I was happy to be asked to be a co-sponsor on that. Um, Doug worked extremely hard um, on that bill, and we we got it through education with the permissive. It was the May, uh, but when we spoke to the body, and when Doug kind of went around and spoke to the body, um, Jeff Foster had an amendment to make it shell. I had an amendment that shall I was talking what? to Doug. So they, a, if a teacher goes through the training, does everything they're supposed to do, and they go to the school board, the school board can't refuse them. Okay. So I had an amendment that said if they refuse them, then they have to hire a full-time SRO. Um, so we, we had that in the waiting, but Jeff Foster's amendment was just like, you know what, they can't refuse them, and that was much better. Um, the debate on the bill yesterday was fantastic. Uh, overwhelmingly, the caucus uh, voted for it, and I was happy to see Doug go through. You know, we were talking about... We're talking off air about this bill. Is does the um, certification to carry come with a requirement to engage a shooter that's down the hall? I mean, no, it does not address any of that. It is simply a um, concealed carry, and they have to go through training. Um, and you know, it, it, it's more of a teacher. If a teacher wants to, you know, have their Second Amendment rights, they should be able to have them. So. Um, it does not address, they are not, you know, required to do any of that thing. That's just, if they are, if they want to be carry firearm, they can. This I is, think Doug and, and, and Art can talk more about the legalities of it. I just know, you know, we live in America and we have the right to, to carry a, a firearm. Yeah, this is, this is one of those issues that everybody agrees that protecting children is the right thing to do and the absolute moral obligation yeah. that we all have as a society and as a, as individuals is just how do we get there um there's some fascinating and, and, debate and, on it and by the yeah, way delegate think, mike delegate doug smith just joined us now via phone oh, doug good morning good morning good morning glad to be on mike is on the other phone line and in studio i'm uh, rob and john and matt harvey matt harvey is the jefferson county prosecuting attorney we just Got into teacher carry a moment ago with Mike. So good, Mike. Finish your thought, then we'll get to Doug. Yeah. So I thought some of the, the debate. Dave Foggin uh, is a teacher. He had a fantastic argument um, for it, and I think some of it was, you know, it, it's going to stop people from thinking these schools are soft targets because they don't know who is carrying and who's not, um, and it's just another way, another guardrail, and, and I'll kind of. Let Doug, Doug, and, and you guys get into the legalities and the specifics of it. But I was very happy to be a sponsor on it. I was very happy to hear the debate yesterday, um, and I think Doug was pleasantly surprised that every single one of his caucus uh, uh, colleagues voted for it. Eighty-nine to eleven is 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 pretty darn good. When we take the commercial break, when we come out of that in a few minutes from the NRA, Art Tom will join us too. Uh, Doug, in regards uh, to this bill, how much teacher input uh, and uh, did the state's uh, school board have any input at all as you were crafting this legislation? 
Uh, yes, sir. Over the last four years, because this is the fourth year I've run this bill, and the first couple years, the the uh, teachers union wasn't too up on it, and um, we had actually Dale Lee um, talk last year and said that a number of teachers had started expressing interest in it. Um, and then I've heard from teachers all over the state that have called me personally and said, hey, we really like this. We like want our protection and, and we really care about these kids and we want to be able to do anything and everything we can to uh, protect them in the event that something like this happens. John Gilstrap, there's a question for Doug. Now, <clears throat> just in terms of the the nature of the training that's involved, I've, I've heard it's 24 hours of training. Is this, is, is it 24 hours of, of, live fire training on the range or what what is the nature of the training well it's not it's not specifically 24 hours the four hours the extra four hours or if within the uh, school district themselves they can add specific things to uh extra training there so it's specific to the general area and the general school and that type of thing um the main hours are spent for a whole plethora of, of different things. There's mitigation techniques, there's uh, neutralization of potential threats, uh, accountability after an event like this and reunification, um, first aid, uh, trauma and first aid. Um, then they get into some of the, uh, the history of school shootings, um, tactics. They'll actually do uh, tactics with uh, responding to the school shooter. And then there is a part in there where they do a qualification also, yes. And is the qualification um, more than what the, the two shots onto the target, which is required by the West, for the, the West Virginia or 12, whatever it is, to get a concealed carry license in, in West Virginia? It is not a robust um, live fire training requirement. Well, we have uh, in there that the training is a completion of tactical fire, live fire arm, firearms training, and that's kind of to be determined okay. by the uh, Homeland Defense, you know, when they put the, the details to everything. Uh, Mike, before we let you go, any final thoughts from you? Then I'll bring our Tom on. No, I think, uh, as I said, Doug, Doug sits on education with me as well as a couple other committees. Um, we've developed a great friendship. He's, a, he, he's been running this bill for four years. Um, he also has the moonshine bill, too. So he's kind of like distilled um, liquor. me. Distilled <laughs> liquor. Distilled liquor. Sorry. Yeah. Um, one's so, taxed, one's not. That's yeah. the difference. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, you know, we, we, we're pro, pro gun and, and pro freedom. So. Hey, uh, Mike, thanks. Appreciate it. Always good to talk with you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.